which is whose life is it anyway? So take a breath into that question and just feel that. Whose life, who's living your life? First answer to that question when I meditated on it was, well, it's my life. And then I thought, what does that mean? And for me, a lot of it is in the choices that I make in each moment. And when I breathe into my life, is it my breath? Is it my mind? Is it the decisions I make? Is it the actions I take? Is it the relationships I have? And I trust that it's all of those things. And as I look at the question again and say, whose life is it anyway? I realize that it's not just my life. It's our life. Because no one is here alone. No one is experiencing on their own. And what we learn in unity, that the thing, the energy, the essence that connects us all is what we come here on Sundays to celebrate and to explore. It's that divine spirit. Expressing through each of us in a unique, personal way. I work with the, the kids during the week on Sunday in a program called Nature and Nurture. It's the real little, little ones from three to five years old. Uh, and we're out in nature, and the idea is to be in nature, showing each other and nature respect. So it's really about creating a loving atmosphere where we respect all nature. So we don't pick flowers, we enjoy them and look at them, but we let them grow on the tree. If we see an ant or a spider, we don't step on it. We look at it, we pick it up and experience it. So we were looking at the ants the other day. <laughs> and uh, one of the kids said, do ants have feelings? And the consensus was, well, no, they don't. And I said, well, you know what? I think they do. I think they do have feelings. And maybe it's a feeling that's just as basic as an energy that's moving them to find that next crumb. Or an energy is saying, stop, I don't want to go in this direction. I don't want to go in that direction. And when I allow that to blossom through what we know as evolution, sort of who we are, bless you, Bruno, <laughs> who we are now in the great big scheme of things as, at least on this planet, the highest expression of conscious awareness, that it's that same energy that's present in an ant that has now blossomed into our bouquet of emotions. And that there are fuel and our guidance system guiding us to experience and express our life. So a big part of my life, when I say whose life is it anyway, it's mine. And how do I experience it? How do I express it? How do I feel it? And how do I make those choices? So much of it is from this emotional center, this emotional energy. So a lot of what we've talked about the past uh, few months, and a lot of my journey, is really exploring and experiencing this powerful solar plexus area, this place where our emotions reside. And really practicing and exploring, detaching the emotions from the old story, the story that we talk about in our head. And when we look at my life, for me, so much I can say, well, my life is, and I go right to the story. I go right to all the stuff. And yes, that is part of what my life is, but the truth of my life right here, right now, especially as a Unity student and now as a Unity spiritual leader, is to tune into what's here right now and what it's urging me to do, what this emotional center, those things that pushed an ant to find the next crumb, 
Now that I've got so much more awareness and abilities and choices, what is my next choice? What is my next possibility? Not governed or constricted by my past, but recognizing that my past is my past, and if it's my life, I can choose to let go of what doesn't serve me, to let go of behaviors and patterns that aren't moving me to my highest good. So, a big part of my exploring my life and what it means to me today, it is my relationships. Number one, my relationship to self with the capital S, which includes myself with the small s. It includes those parts of me that I would like to go away, where I maybe don't show up as the best self, or the way I should show up, but yet it's honoring that, looking at it without judgment, and treating it the way I would treat one of the kids when they fall down or when they're not showing up in the way we adults think kids should show up. Not to judge them, not to put them down, not to try to stifle them and say they should be different, but to say, hey, what's going on right now? Mm -hmm. Let's look at this energy that's coming up without just pushing it away <coughs> and see what's underneath it. And what really helps me to do that is my relationship to spirit. Looking at that small S and then inviting in the big S, the higher self as we call it. Which is our Christ consciousness as we learn in unity. And Christ, when we talk about Christ consciousness, we're not talking about the person Jesus. We're talking about the energy that he was able to align with that connection with that divine, which, as he said, is present in all of us, that kingdom of heaven within. And when I breathe that small S, those disappointments, those things that don't feel right, that anxiety, that anger or resentment that I feel that I shouldn't have, when I take it into that still small space, into that place, secret place of the Most High that we talked about last week, which is not some place out there, it's so close and so intimate. When I go to that intimate place, connection with spirit, with those foibles, those things that I really want to get rid of, and allow myself to be there, within the acceptance comes the transformation, comes the realization that there's nothing to fix just an awareness that there's nothing wrong to begin with, that I am a human being on this journey of understanding and the foibles, the vulnerability, the anxieties, those uncomfortable things, that's the healing. That's the, the gift of being an expression of spirit in this creative work of art that we call the universe. Because this physical universe really is a creation of the divine energy through us. So we're creating it with the divine. And everything we feel, everything we experience, if we let go of the judgment, it's just energy. It's just an experience. It's just part of the miracle of this existence that we're living. And my truth in this moment, as I always share, this is my personal truth, it's not the truth with the big capital T. My truth is all I can share. But my truth is that we are not only experiencing it with God or that divine energy. We are experiencing it for God. He could not have that experience but through us. That's why there's so many different human beings expressing in so many different ways. You look around this room, nobody looks the same. I wouldn't mistake Mary for TJ or Colleen or Winona. So each of our experiences is a unique gift to God that he can experience. The pain, the anxiety,
anxiety, the jealousy, the murderous rage that sometimes comes up, it's energy. And our choice is always, what do we do with it? Do we judge it and try to stifle it? Or do we feel it? And with the knowledge and understanding that we have, the baby steps that we're taking out of that ant person that we were many, many, you know, incarnations ago, do we say, what's next for me? How do I direct this energy in a powerful way? And I know for me that murderous rage, when I can accept it and give it space, it's just energy. And I can detach it from that person that I want to, realizing that they're just pointing the way back to my own power. And then I can say, okay, this is my power, this is my energy to manifest, to create. Where do I want to focus it? I can think about revenge and how to get back at that person, or I can say, no, I'm going to work on my talk this week for unity. Mm -hmm. Or no, I'm going to take a walk. Or I'm going to put on some music like we practiced last week, Aretha Franklin, and sing a song. So, if it's your life, it's always your choice. Um, which brings me to one of my favorite topics, which I've been hitting on fairly regularly over the past couple of months, which is codependency. And my feeling it's the number one dis-ease on the planet today. And what is codependency but your desire to live your life through someone else? Your false belief that you think you know better, you know what's better for someone else than they do. Somehow you become their higher power. <laughs> yeah. And what we talked about some last week is not to send a negative energy to people and how often we do that and how it's a disservice. You look at someone else and through your own belief system or your own judgment you think, oh they're doing it wrong or oh that poor person. That's so sad. That is a denial of our basic unity principle. One power, one presence active in the universe and in my life, and not just in my life, in everybody's life, God the good, omnipotent. They have their own guidance. It's their life. And so to project your negativity onto them, oh how sad they got, you know, they've they just been diagnosed with cancer. That's awful. We don't know what gifts that cancer is going to bring them, or what learning, or what miracles. Oh, that's so sad, they're dating an alcoholic. We don't know what energy has drawn, drawn them together, but if we believe in our unity principles, it's God the good omnipotent that is at work. And so we stand back and we bless them. Anything that you don't understand and that you have a tendency to send that negative energy, stop, look, listen. And when we stop and look and listen, we're looking and listening within. What is that triggering in me? What is my stuff that it's bringing up? Because that's there for a gift. That's there for you. Notice where that negativity, that wanting to stop and change happens. Another thing that I want to really focus on as we move to the end of the talk is a concept that TJ and I have been talking about at his Awakened Living. He does a, a wonderful program in, uh, in San Francisco. And one of the things he does is a Saturday morning uh, really get together. We get together and we just explore spirit and these concepts that we're talking about. And the question he asked us last week was, does positive thinking work? <laughs> and I said no. Because as soon as you go into positive thinking, you're giving energy to the negative, And it builds up a polarity. But then as we discussed it, we realized, and I was actually able to come up with a number of circumstances in my own life, where, oh yeah, positive thinking, I focused on it, I you know, really thought, thought positively and it worked. We realized it did work. And then this week it came up again, and we realized that positive thinking does work, but it's also part of an old paradigm, an old way of thinking. 
And it's an old way that is not consistent with God the good omnipotent, one power and one energy. And I realize that for me, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work because you're constantly putting mental energy into your agenda and what you think should be happening as opposed to what is happening. And as I meditated and looked at whose life is, is it anyway this week, and I realized it's my life, and I realized that all of it is my life. My relationships, all the stuff we talked about, and it includes that foundation, that powerful foundation, God, the good, omnipotent. And if that's true, there's never anything to fix. There's never anything to try to consciously, mentally make that good thing happen. I can do that, and I can get focused on my agenda and put a lot of energy into it, but I've realized in the past couple of years since I've stopped all that mental activity that what's happening is much more powerful, much more exciting, and much more fun than that mental game of trying to, trying to make it go my way. And there's much less disappointment. There's much less frustration. I'm not saying I don't feel disappointed. I'm not saying I don't feel frustrated. But now when I feel those two things, I don't go back to the drawing board and try to do another vision board and focus on it harder. I say, okay, where is this disappointment leading me? Where am I, where am I out of balance with my life? Which is showing up as good, always leading me to my highest good. It's not that I let go of goals. I don't call them goals anymore, though I call them intentions. And they're different than something I want to happen out there. There are things like, I want to express myself in a powerful way that is accepted and uh, acknowledged. I want to be in a place of peace and harmony in my relationships. So it's more of a basic concept than a certain thing out there. I still visualize my, it's not a Cadillac anymore, because since I test drove one, I don't really like it. Now I think it's going to be maybe an Audi or one of those new electric cars, which are so fabulous. Uh, but my happiness isn't connected to that. That's something I visualize and think if it happens, it's nice. But I'm much more in a place of looking at what's already there and saying, where are the gifts? Our new friend who stood up here and thank you for being or jumping in and being yes. our platform assistant. <laughs> uh, and I love yes. the synchronicity. You really talked about what we did during our meditation this morning is to look at the miracles that are in our lives this morning and to wake up and be above the clouds is a miracle. And if I'm too focused on positive thinking in my agenda, I miss what's right here, right now. And so, whose life is it anyway? It's your life. And it's here, right now. And what's it telling you? What's it urging you to do? We wake up each day with infinite possibilities. Infinite. And that's what our great teacher, the Christ, told us. All things are possible with spirit. And we practice being with spirit in the meditation this morning. When we practice breathing, we are always with spirit. Because to me, the most basic explanation of what spirit is, is this invisible substance all around us that allows us to be consciously present. So I invite you as you move through this week to be with the breath, to be with your life right here. Trust that it's your life. Get out of anybody else's head when you find yourself there. Be aware when you think, when you suddenly think you know better what someone else should do than they should and let go. Send them positive energy rather than negative energy. And be with your life your energy, your expression, your choices, your emotions, your thoughts, your feelings, and be aware of the actions that you take. 
And whatever they are, take them with love. Take them with trust. Trust that you are acting with and for spirit in everything you do. And that it has power. Because you have power. Because you are that expression of the divine. And all of the energy in the universe is in you. When I focused on my breath last night, thinking about the talk, I had just watched something on TV that was about the cosmos and the tornadoes and the hurricanes and the power of the world around us and the supernovas that explode out there. There were pictures of these great cosmic events going on. And then I sat for my meditation and I realized that that's the same energy that flows through each breath. And yet it's been downloaded into that intimate, loving relationship, my personal relationship with spirit, my Christ consciousness. It's that energy that is lovingly present in me through my breath. That's a miracle. 